I think that at its, at its essence, the reason immigration issues are important to us is because of our faith. Specifically, Jesus, you, you think about how did he announce his ministry? He came to his hometown and he said, guess what? The good news is not just for the Jews. It's for all these other people. And he specifically highlighted people who were struggling, who were on the margins. I came to set the captives free. I came to give sight to the blind. You know, this idea. And, and at the end of his ministry, he highlighted a story. And he said, at the end of the world, there's gonna come a day. And here's how you're going to be evaluated. Did you give food to the hungry? Did you provide water? Did you visit the sick? Did you take care of those in the prison? But what was the other thing he said? Did you welcome the stranger? Now, we, I think we in the West struggle with that because we, we, don't, we don't have a culture of, of, of hospitality. But in many of my clients, they will tell me, if you ever come to my country, just go to my house and we'll take care of you. You know, they understand this welcoming the stranger. And, and so Jesus, when he's speaking of this, he is going culturally all the way back to the times of Abraham. And then also in the Mosaic Law, what did God say a culture was supposed to do? A, a just culture is judged in part, in large part, on do you protect the widow, do you protect the orphan, and do you protect the foreigner? And over and over and over, God said, this is what the society's supposed to look like. You protect these classes of people because they're on the margins, because they don't have anybody else to fight for them, they don't have anybody else to take care of them, and make sure you make the laws equal, make sure you don't oppress them, and remember, you too were a foreigner. And, and Peter picks up on this idea in, in the New Testament. He says, you're not from this world anymore. Remember, you are a pilgrim, you're a sojourner, i.e., you are a foreigner in this world on your way somewhere else. And so all throughout Scripture, both what we would call the Old Testament and the New Testament, God speaks of take care of the foreigner. And I think we've lost that in many ways. We've, 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 we've lost the biblical narrative of how God looks at foreigners and how God looks at our obligations to foreigners. And we've allowed it to be swallowed up by, by political sound bites and, and we've allowed it to be swallowed by fear. And, and the fear has been absolutely pervasive since 9-11. And, and when you look at it and when you start to think about it, God specifically says, I am not a God of fear, and perfect love casts out fear. And so we are a people of grace. That is the entire essence of who we are as Methodists and as Christians. We believe in the grace of God and in the love of God. And so we, we have an obligation to live out our lives, not in fear, but in grace and in love. And we have an obligation not to exclude people, not to shun people, not to try to kick people away. We have an obligation to include and to welcome and to shelter. And, and so that's, to me, the faith that we hold. And God is, is demanding of us. I mean, if you look at that passage in Matthew 25, there are a bunch of people that said, oh, we know you, God, we love you, God. And Jesus says, who are you? You didn't, you didn't feed me, you didn't clothe me, you didn't visit me, you didn't shelter me. Oh, well, what are you talking about? Well, look here. When you did it to the least of these, you were doing it to me. And when you refused to help the least of these, you were refusing me. I think that's a terrifying idea that we could stand in front of God and he says to us, how could you ignore me? How could you turn me away? 
You say you love me. You say you're my people. You say you're people of grace. You say you're people of love. And yet you acted in fear and in prejudice. And you acted not in grace, but in judgment and condemnation. And, and I tell people all the time, I don't ever want to stand in front of God and have him say that I was more concerned about the status of someone's documents than I was about the status of their soul. And I think that's, that's the heart of our faith. It doesn't matter how they got here. You know, I look at the Great Commission. It says, go into all the world, teaching them my commandments and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And look, I'm always with you. Okay, we have a command to go, but guess what? God's brought the world to us. We don't even have to leave our backyards in order to reach the peoples of the earth. And that's our mandate. Our mandate is to make disciples, followers of Christ, all over the world. So for me, it's never about politics. I mean, I understand that there are politics involved, but it's, it, at the end of the day, it's about faith. And am I going to be a faithful follower of Christ? And if I am, then I have to be willing to go. And guess what? He's already done me the favor of allowing me to go to all the world in my own neighborhood.